Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video, we aim to investigate the effect of substrate concentration on the rate of reaction, specifically the catalase reaction where hydrogen peroxide is converted to oxygen and water with the help of catalase. The first thing we're going to do is to make a range of concentrations of hydrogen peroxide, which is the substrate using serial dilution. And then we are going to measure the rate of reaction by measuring the number of bubbles produced in a minute. Bubbles are produced in this reaction because oxygen gas is being formed. As we mentioned just now, we are going to make a range of concentrations using serial dilution. In this case, we are going to have the concentration each time. So we have 20%, 10%, 5%, 2.5% in this experiment. To do this, we add an equal amount of the previous solution to an equal amount of distilled water. So 10 cm cubed to 10 cm cubed. Other than the concentration shown on the screen here, we will also use 0%, which is just distilled water, to act as a control in this experiment. Alright, with the calculations done, we can finally perform the experiment in real life. I like to start with placing the same amount of distilled water in every beaker. So this is me putting 10 cm cube of water in every beaker. And then start the serial dilution process. So take 10 cm cube, transfer it to the next beaker, and then pipe it up and down using the uh, string in order to mix properly, and then transfer it into the next beaker. So here we have it, four concentrations. After the concentrations are prepared, we add 4 cm cube of the substrate which is hydrogen peroxide into a boiling tube, and then add one cm cube of potato extract contains catalase. And we put the bung on, it's connected to a delivery tube. And as you can see, the delivery tube is then connected to a test tube with distilled water. And we count the number of bubbles produced in one minute. Now the bubbles are not very obvious in this video and will be shown in the next clip. But yes, after one minute, we stop counting the bubbles. Okay, this next skip is slightly better. We can see the bubbles slowly forming here. This is the oxygen gas being produced uh, as a result of the reaction. So yeah, you repeat this experiment for every concentration of H2O2 and you should get results that look like this. This is what the results table should look like. Make sure that your formatting is correct, same decimal places, units in the header only, and number of bubbles produced per minute should always be in whole number. After all, there's no such thing as half a bubble or 0.2 of a bubble. So make sure that your um, numbers of bubbles are always expressed in whole number even when it's a mean so even if you take multiple readings and take a mean value that mean value should also be expressed as a whole number most importantly make sure that your results show the correct trend because there's always a mark for trend that's it for this video i hope you learned something see you next video Bye bye